the police response to conflict in Hamilton, London, Ottawa, Toronto, or any municipality, uh, it varies. In one, in one city you may be shot, in one you may be tasered, in the other one you may simply be let, let free through, not, through de de-escalation. So does the province need to step in and uh, direct police services? And that's the question we are exploring in this investigation. And that's why it's very important for me to hear firsthand the concerns of these families, because uh, sitting at a desk in uh, Sky Rise on Bay Street in downtown Toronto is not the same thing as coming down to Burlington and listening to how these people feel. And uh, there's a tremendous amount of grief out there. Now, have you heard anything from these families at this point that you find either disturbing or shocking? You know, like I said, I've met families in Toronto this week, and met families here. Uh, they uh, they've asked me not to get into particulars. So let me just highlight some of the general themes. The general themes I'm hearing from these families is that uh, there's uh, they're not satisfied with the thoroughness of the uh, SI investigations, and that we've noted before is a work in progress. They're not happy with how they're being treated by the police services after the shooting. Uh, they're not happy with uh, how the, the police are uh, level cooperation. Uh, the level of cooperation is insufficient. Uh, they're concerned about delays. Um, and they're concerned about the, the training that the police get. They're always, these families are always saying, well, what other options were explored before the person was shot? Uh, could the police not have simply um, contain the situation in another way before using lethal force. I think these are all legitimate questions and it falls exactly into the area that we're currently investigating which is the de-escalation. When the police respond to a conflict, uh, are they properly trained? Are they properly trained to defuse the situation before it becomes a lethal uh, situation? So are, are you um, sort of heading in the direction of, of changing uh, the way officers are trained at the Ontario Police College, or, or are we talking about actually changing the Police Act and policies and procedures around the I think I think all those things are on the table. The uh, Police College in Ontario is run by the province, so it's directly under our oversight. So we're looking at the curriculum there, we're looking at best practices from around the world. We've had people contact us from as far as Scotland, uh, LA, people who have written doctorate degrees on use of force and de-escalation. We have so far 162 submissions from people all around Canada and the world. So we want to get it right. We want to look at what is the best model that's being used to defuse these situations. And that's why we've made a call to police services, police chiefs to participate. Some have said no, some have said yes, some have said maybe. How many have said yes? Uh, I'd have to look into it. The, the official position of the Ontario uh, Chiefs of Police Association is that they will not participate, which I think is childish. Uh, just grabbing a ball in your Nike and just running home uh, is not going to help. In the end, if the ministry decides to issue guidelines, they will be imposed on them. So why would we want to participate? I do not know. The second point you, is... I'm sorry, can you tell us whether Chief Blair in Toronto has cooperated with you? Or he has hasn't come forward. No, he has not come forward. But uh, the second point is, de-escalation is not about uh, simply members of the public. I mean, what if uh, someone has a gun and the police have a gun? Uh, it's not obvious that the police will always win. I mean, you know, de-escalation means we're saving police officers' lives. That's a good thing, too. Um, so we've had police associations, though, uh, tell us, yes, they'll cooperate. The position of the Police Association of uh, Ontario uh, is that they will cooperate. So there's very, various degrees of people coming forward saying yes, we won't, no, we won't. But at the end of the day, we have the information we need to proceed. And we always uh, are more enriched by the most perspectives we can get. But right now, we're quite comfortable with the information we have and the investigation is going well. And Mr. Mayor, some of the families that you've met with today, um, their loved ones were killed a number of years ago. You did meet with a, um, a member of Steve Messick's family that's very fresh in this community. Um, does it seem like finally the public is, is becoming aware of this issue and is this, have we reached the tipping point on this issue? 
Well, it's one of the reasons why we decided to announce in this investigation right after the uh, Yatin shooting in Toronto. I think that we're at a point where <clears throat> we have to ask ourselves the question is, the following question, is there not a better way to deal with these situations than to uh, lead to fatalities? And so I think we're at that point, and that's why we decided to launch this investigation. Um, there was a suggestion you might have a statement to the door camera, the door camera might have a statement tomorrow. Uh, do you know that for sure? Or? That's what he's indicated to me, Mr. Mr. Door, but uh, you'll have to ask him for any further information. And any idea about when you're uh, We're on track, likely in the next uh, you know, three to four months.